Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Julie and I mostly make content surrounding topics such as music, makeup, as well as mental health. If you were curious, my pronouns are they slash them. Today's video is one that I've seen a lot of people make and a lot of people complain about people making. I was actually looking up the title, Why I Have No Friends, and seeing what kind of other titles people were posting about. And it was interesting because a lot of the titles were like, why I choose to have no friends, which I guess it being a choice could be part of it for someone, but may not be part of it for everyone. Anyway, let's get into my version of this video today. Without triggering myself and going through my entire lived experience in gruesome detail for my activated brain, I think it would be easier to just talk about why I have no friends now and what led up to that point. So if you're watching this, you might be like, but we're friends, so why are you making this a video? Well, I have online friends. For this video, I'm specifically talking about having in-person friends. I don't, unless you count my cousin, my grandmother, my partner, <laughs> or my great aunt, my parents maybe even too. I don't have any in-person friends and I'm actually learning to live with that and learning to be okay with that. For as long as I can remember, I struggled socially. I always had social anxiety. I always was awkward and shy, or I was too much, too loud, too obnoxious, too extroverted, especially in like mid to late high school. And I struggled with a lot of masking behaviors to fit in and have friends. I also, at one point in my life, struggled with BPD and would mirror people's personalities unintentionally for my survival so that people would like me and not abandon me and they'd be like, oh, I really like you. And I'm thinking like, yeah, because I'm just like you. I'm just mimicking your mannerisms, your interests, and your personality so that you will like me. Doing all of that throughout my life just to have friends was very exhausting. And especially in the end when it turned out that a lot of people that I was friends with weren't really my friends. A lot of people I was friends with talked about me behind my back or <laughs> this is a big one we're friends with people that I didn't like and didn't trust or people who rather did not like me. Maybe we were friends at one point and had a falling out. That's something I struggle with to this day. I'm very sensitive to that. I mean that's why I stay away from friend groups because I've been in friend groups and I've found them in my lived experience to just be toxic where everyone just talks about each other behind their back. They don't really like each other but they don't want to be alone and they don't want the burden of seeking out new friends. They just wanna stay in their comfort zone, even though they're constantly feeling uncomfortable and triggered and angry around each other. And I just didn't find that to be feasible for me. Leading up past high school, when you're in high school, you show up to school and you make friends. People are there, so it's an easy way to make friends. Not to say the high school was easy, it was not easy, but I mean, accessibility-wise, you're a kid, you're in school, a kid talks to you or you talk to a kid, you make a friend maybe. When you're a young adult or an adult later on, it's not that accessible, especially because <laughs> in my family, we have the rule of I don't shit where I eat, <laughs> meaning that I don't like to be friends with people that I work with. It doesn't ever go well, and then I have to continue working with them, and that's really uncomfortable. I've also learned this recently as an autistic person that just because people at work express interest in like getting a coffee with you or hanging out with you, they don't really actually wanna hang out with you and they like you, but like as an acquaintance, as a coworker. And that's like a different role in their friendship hierarchy than an actual like in-person close friend. I take everything literally and at face value. So I did not understand that until recently. I do better interacting with people when there is a distance in the relationship and I do not have to meet with them in person. Moving forward into my later adult years, I did have some in-person friends and those friendships ended in a very traumatic way. Like I suffered trauma from my friendships ending and people don't talk about this often they talk about trauma from grief and loss with like a breakup or a loved one but a close best friend especially for someone like me who rarely had that throughout their life is a big deal and is someone that you really care about and revere and that was excruciatingly painful to lose those friends. I've, of course, for the privacy of those people I'm not going to tell my story and I don't think that would be good for my nervous system today 
but those friendships just ended so badly. It made me have a negative association with the word best friend, and I don't feel comfortable calling anybody that unless they're family. Like my cousin Sam is my best friend, but that's because we've been best friends our whole life because we're family. So there's a different secure attachment and trust there. Um, if you know anything about attachment styles, I tend to have a very secure attachment to my family, but I have avoidant attachment with friendships. And I've talked about this in therapy recently, and I recognize that a lot of it has to do with protecting myself because being vulnerable with people has gotten me hurt. And I struggle to read social cues in context of like, oh, should I be vulnerable with this person? Can I trust this person? Is it too soon to tell this person this thing? I really don't understand all those social contexts and end up making mistakes. And yes, it's okay to make mistakes, but it's very dysregulating for my nervous system to make those mistakes and it doesn't feel good. I prefer online friendships because there's a lot of boundaries. There's no expectation for how often we have to talk. We don't have to set up a time to see each other, even if it was like virtually or something like that. And in-person friendships, no matter who the person is, I just find them to be very overstimulating because of my autism. So I learned from my neuropsych, go watch my video about my neuropsych if you haven't already, that I have low verbal recall. And that means if someone's like, hey Jules, and they tell me a story, I barely remember the story. I can barely hold on to the story. And it's not because I wasn't listening attentively, but I can't hold on to verbal stuff. I'm really, really good cognitively at holding on to written stuff. So this makes a lot of sense to me as to why online friendships I can take in someone's vent, I can read it in detail, I can take my time thoughtfully and mindfully to respond, whereas in person, so much is coming at me and that can be really overwhelming. And the other hard part is I'm autistic, so I struggle to initiate and maintain conversation. So I need a friend who's a little more outgoing than me and talkative, but then if they are more outgoing and talkative, I get easily overstimulated because of how much sensory and cognitive input I'm taking in when I'm listening to someone talking. That can be really overwhelming too. Beyond that, I just struggle a lot with jealousy and friendships, and that's where I struggled with the label best friend and why I don't utilize it anymore. So if I have like a new friend and we're hanging out and they have a friend group and I notice that they're spending a lot of time with their friend group and talking to their friends regularly and doing things with their friends, I feel othered. Even if they're like, oh, they invite me to stuff. And it's like, this is not the fault of the friend. This, this is my own internal thing. Like the friend will include me, but I don't, as I said previously, want to be part of the friend group because I'm not going to vibe with all the personalities in the friend group. I get overstimulated one-to-one. -one. Imagine how overstimulated I get in a group setting. It's just so much input for my nervous system. And I don't tend to get along with an entire group of people on a whim because there are small things about people that I'm like, mm, no, I don't really like that about that person. They're not a bad person. They're just not for me. But it's hard because I recognize what level friendship I'm on with somebody and I think part of me wants that best friendship and that close friendship and is very confused about how do I get there? How do I establish that with someone? Or maybe that's not what everyone wants. Like people might want me in the coworker, acquaintance, loose leaf kind of friend category. And that's totally fine. But as an autistic person, I recognize that I just value close and intimate relationships of all kinds, family, friends, partner, whatever. And I have a really hard time with like kind of a surface level friendship, like someone who just checks in with you here and there. You don't really talk about hard things and it doesn't really serve me in my life. I guess I could title this video why I choose to have no friends, but I work really hard to try to make friends. And that's what I've been frustrated about. And that's why I wanted to make this video because last night I was just thinking about how I join new Discord servers and I use all the friendship apps and I swipe on people and I message them. Every single time I use Bumble BFF to talk to somebody, I get about maybe a week or two of conversation if I'm lucky. Sometimes people talk to me for one night and then they never respond again. And it's hard because obviously I have rejection sensitivity as a neurodivergent person. So even though I can logic my way out of it, oh, they're busy, maybe I don't use the app a lot. The RSD comes in and says, there are other people in their life that are more important than you. You're just some random person on the internet and they don't wanna to talk to you and they don't wanna be your friend. Um, or maybe you said or did something wrong in the conversation. You've done that throughout your whole life. So maybe they're not interested. And that hurts, but the change in behavior for me is that as a young person, I would do anything to change who I was and mask 
to have the validation of this person likes me and wants to be my friend. And now I come to a place of acceptance of, yeah, maybe this person doesn't want to be my friend. There's plenty of people I want to be friends with, so I can't blame them for that. And that's a personal preference and that's totally okay. Um, but I've just put so much effort into trying to find new community spaces where I interact with people. And I feel very out of place. I am 31 years old. I was online in the scene kid MySpace days and there were a lot of problems back then and things that were not right um, that are definitely better now. But there are things now going on in social media spaces that are just very activating and overwhelming. So I also have a hard time with that because I would like to have a friend that has a similar belief system to me, but I might not find that. I'm not gonna find me in the world because <laughs> I'm my own person. I think I would be friends with myself, but I understand why someone else might not be friends with me because they might also want a friend whose beliefs and values are similar to theirs and mine may not be. And so it's just a really difficult process when you're in your 20s or 30s, 40s, whatever, and you're like, oh, finding friends in person isn't really accessible for me, especially in pandemic times. And I go online and I talk to people and it's awkward and I don't really know what to do. And it can be really disheartening. And at some point, you might just give up. And I think it's okay to give up sometimes. Like I think there's a difference between not believing in yourself and giving up and giving up when you realize you put a lot of effort into something and you're not getting much reciprocal effort back. I mean, if something is not serving you and it's causing you stress and anxiety and you don't need to face it in your life because there's other things you might need to face instead, I think that it's worth it to just cut off and do what's best for you. I am just very, very sensitive to the fact that I don't fit um, I think lesser than wanting a friend, I want a sense of belonging and I never have that no matter where I go in my life. And that's the most lonely feeling. And so I've recognized in the past few years, I've dealt with a lot of loneliness, but I think that my loneliness might be about an unmet need. First of all, I think it's about affirming I'm autistic. <laughs> I don't need as much social interaction and friends as other people, which isn't the case for all autistics. I'm just speaking for me personally. I actually do better when I isolate. I isolated from toxic friendships and went to college. I wouldn't be able to focus on college and my job and my health if I was still partaking those friendships and giving people my all that didn't deserve it. I am proud of the success that I've had by taking space to be on my own. I value spending time with my family and connecting with them. And so I have the spoons of capacity to do that now because I'm not spending time with friends who don't serve me. If you're watching this and maybe we were friends at one point and you don't really know what happened, I think you're a good person, you're a nice person and I enjoyed spending time with you, but there's just something that isn't right where we don't click, where I don't have an established sense of safety and a secure attachment. And that probably isn't your fault. I have a lot of complex drama that probably has a lot to do with me. But I think instead of shaming myself and pathologizing it and saying, I need to change it and I need to have friends and I need to do exposure, exposure is actually really not great for trauma. Trauma really needs a healed nervous system and will never be fully healed in the society we live in. But I need to practice self-compassion. I need to spend time being kind to myself, discovering who I am and what I need and self-soothing and... I only want to have a friend in my life if they can support me on that journey and I can support them. I would need a friend that doesn't really bring me down and helps me grow. And that's hard to find because people are people, right? So having a relationship with someone, even a lovely, healthy, secure friend, they're going to struggle, you're going to struggle, and there's going to be rifts in the friendship. There's just conflict in all relationships, healthy or otherwise. And we have to repair them. All relationships are effort. I just don't think I have the spoons to put the effort in to really like make a new friend, trust in that friend, build closeness. And so I am very closed off and I will message people and they will message me, but I'm not looking for my absolute best friend in the world or a friend that's gonna take me out for coffee every week. Oh, and that's another piece. I have agoraphobia, so I struggle to go out to crowded places. I also don't drink alcohol. So there's a lot that I don't really love to do. I don't like to go into the city. Um, so I miss out on a lot of things that maybe people my age enjoy doing that I don't. I would rather just sit at my house, especially by 7 p.m. I wanna be in my pajamas, maybe play some Uno <laughs> and uh, have a snack and go to bed a little while later. Um, and so that's 
why I get along with elderly people. <laughs> because I live a slow paced life like them. It's interesting, I thought in filming this video, I was gonna feel upset and ashamed, but in just unmasking and talking through this, I realized that it's okay that I have no friends. Maybe that is a choice that I make. And yeah, it might be some people's fault a little bit, but it takes two to tango and it's also a little bit of mine and I take accountability for that, but I don't feel ashamed because I take accountability and feel bad for when I've hurt people in the past, but I don't feel bad for just choosing not to be friends with somebody because I don't think that that has truly hurt anybody for me to just take space and decide, well, this person can be a mutual on social media, but I don't think that will hang out because I'm not looking at someone in a negative light. I'm looking at someone through a gray area lens. I hope this video resonated for you. Thank you so much for watching. This is a stuffy kitty that I had from high school that I was just stimming with because I know my other fidget makes a lot of noise. Please subscribe to my channel. I'd love to make more videos. I'm trying to take space from social media, even though this is social media. And so I'm hoping maybe I'll make more YouTube videos in the meantime because I'm spending less time online. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye all.